Good morning, church. Thanks for joining us. Whether you're here with us gathered, and it is so good to see all of you, or if you're gathering with us online, we're thankful that you would tune in right now. There's two things you can do to help us right now. The first is that you can share this. And so the folks here in the audience know that I just asked them to log in on Sunday mornings and share this so that more people will hear the good news. So if you're watching with us on Facebook, you can share online. If you're watching on Vimeo or YouTube, you can email this link to a friend. Make a plan to talk with them about it later. Follow up with them. What they hear? What good news did they hear this morning? And secondly, you can give. You can do that easily at highlandcc.org or by texting GIVE to the number you see on the screen. We've been looking forward to this time for a long time, it feels like, right? Time when we're back together. And we know that not everyone can be back together with us right now. Let me remind you, we're going to continue to grow this number who are gathered with us on site each week until we can reach a capacity where all who desire to come can do so safely, whether that means multiple services or some other plan. We have a, a desire to see us gathered together. But we're so thankful for those who are continuing to join us online. We want you to know that you are part of the mission body of this church. That's why we started the Be Church Initiative. It's a challenge to all of you to be the church wherever you are, even those who are gathered here in this room tonight. We know that you're only gathered here for an hour so that you can go from here, and in every hour of your week, you'll be the church wherever you are. Let's pray as we begin our time of worship. God, you are Lord and God most high. We give you praise and honor and glory. We thank you, God, because you're faithful. You've been faithful through this season that we have walked through together as your body. You have been faithful to your body, not only to us, but to your body scattered around the world, God. And I pray that in this season that more people will come to faith in you and in your son, Jesus Christ. God, I pray that they'll see by the faithfulness of your church that you are a God who can be trusted and relied on. God, I pray that you'll receive this worship, that we'll turn our hearts to you, all those, foc- all those distractions trying to pull at us right now, would you let those fade away? Let us focus on you. And we pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Grecian. Let's worship together, church family. Shout hallelujah. Woo! Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Hey, unto the Lord. Come on, shout hallelujah. Oh. Shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah unto the Lord. So sing aloud to God, let the people shout before His throne. Hallelujah, and sing aloud to God, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Here we go now, so shout hallelujah, boo, shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah unto the Lord. Come on, shout hallelujah. Hey, shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah unto the Lord from the ends of the earth and from the depths of the sea. Let all creation praise His name. Of the earth, oh, from the depths. 
depths of the sea. Let all creation praise His name. Come on, so shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah unto the Lord. Come on, shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah unto the Lord from the ends of the earth. The depths of the sea. Oh, let all creation praise His name. And from the ends of the earth, from the depths of the sea, let all creation praise His name. So shout hallelujah. Unto the come on, lift him up. Shout hallelujah. Oh, shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. One more time. Unto the oh, so come on, shout hallelujah. Hey, shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Unto the one last time. Shout hallelujah. Oh, we shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Unto the Lord. So shout, shout hallelujah, and shout, shout hallelujah, mm, shout, shout hallelujah, and shout hallelujah unto the Lord. Amen. Can you say hallelujah? Oh, it's so nice to do that and not just hear Russ. <laughs> or Laurel, <laughs> or Audrey, <laughs> or Cooper, just a few of us. It seems like a lifetime ago that, uh, you know, more than just a few of us were in here. And, and I'm so thankful for those that are gathered. But as Eric said, I'm so thankful for you joining us online. You are all part of this family. We are all part of the universal church of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is just so wonderful but to be together, there's just some energy. I have this volcano of energy inside of me that I, it's all kind of, I don't even know, just can't even explain it. But this song is a song that I think it just kind of encapsulates the past few months for all of us. Life is not always easy. And it wasn't for Job. It was much harder for Job than it has been for a lot of us the past six months. But he still praised his God, the same God that we serve. Amen. So let's sing this song and sing it out. You know it, I know it. Let's say, blessed be the name of the Lord, the Lord who brought us here to this place at this moment, at this time together. Blessed be his name. Blessed be your name in a land that is plentiful, where streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place. Though I walk through the wilderness, blessed be your name. And every blessing you pour out high, I turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, here we go. Still I will say, come on, blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, blessed be your name. Oh, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And blessed be your glorious name. And blessed be your name when the sun shining down on me when the world's all as it should be blessed be your name and blessed be your name on a road marked with suffering there is pain in the offering blessed be your name 
church. And every blessing you pour out, I, I turn back to pain. And when the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. And blessed be your name, oh, 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 blessed be the name of the Lord, and blessed be your glories. Come on, sing, blessed be the name of the Lord, and blessed be your name, oh, 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 oh blessed be the name of the Lord, and blessed be your glorious name. You give and take away, you give and you take away, but my heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. Here we go, basis, come on. You give and take away, yes, Lord, you give, you take away, but my heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. All right, ladies, you know what to do. You give and take away. You give, you take away. But my heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. Do that again. Come on, you give and take away. choose to say, Lord, blessed be your, all your heart, blessed be the name, come on, of the Lord, hey, blessed be your name, Lord, we give you praise, through the good, through the bad, one more, blessed be the name of the Lord, and blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, and blessed be your glory as name. Just say, we love you, God, and we thank you for those words. Mm. Uh, his love is the most constant thing in our lives. Let's sing about your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. And your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. And it's higher than the mountains that I face. And it's stronger than the power of the grave. It's constant in the trial and the change. This one thing remains. I know this one thing. Yes, it does. It remains. And your love never fails. It never gives up. It never runs out on me. And your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. I know your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love, and your love, and on and on and on and on it goes. Yes, it overwhelms satisfies my soul and I never ever have to be afraid this one thing oh it remains your love never fails it never gives up it never runs out on me I know it never runs out on me. Let's sing your love never fails. It never gives up. It never runs out on me. Your love and your love. Here we go. In death, in life, I'm confident. 
stand and covered by the power of your great love. Oh, oh, oh my death is paid. There's nothing that can separate my heart from your great love. Oh, sing it all together. Your love never fails. It never gives up. It never runs out on me. Your love never fails. It never gives up. It never runs out on me. Hey, your love never fails. It never gives up. It never runs out on me. Sing it again. Your love never fails. It never gives up. It never runs out on me. Two more. Your love it never It never runs out on me This one thing Oh, oh it remains I know this one thing Remains Amen. Oh, I love that message. All right, I'm going to ask you to do something that we didn't talk about and it's okay. We're going to stand up for just a second. Let's stand up. Hopefully I won't m mess cameras up or anything, but I guess we'll know that after this time. <laughs> and sing this song together. I haven't sung this song in years, but it just came into my head because he deserves all that we have to give him. We need to stand in awe of this beautiful, wonderful God that we serve. That is more present now than maybe ever before because we uh, we're, we're in a world of hurt right now. We need healing in all sorts of ways. And he is here. He is here for us, and we need to make the world aware of that as well. Let's sing this song together. Stand in awe of our God. You are beautiful beyond description to marvel for words too wonderful for comprehension like nothing ever seen or heard and who can grasp your infinite wisdom oh, yes. and who can fathom the depths of your First John, and uh, after that you can you can have a seat, and we're gonna worship some more through song. This is First John, one. I'm gonna start in verse five. This is the message we have heard from Him and declare to you: God is light. In Him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with Him, yet walk in the darkness. 
we lie and do not live by the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us of our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar and his word has no place in our lives. But here we go into chapter two. My dear children, I write this to you that so you will not sin. But anybody, but if anybody sins, we have one who speaks to the Father in our defense. <laughs> Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. Amen. And the church said, amen, in the reading of his word. You can have a seat. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. And beauty that may hold this heart, adore you. A hope of a life spent with you. So here I am. What a beautiful name it is. What 
a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. And what a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. I love this verse. You didn't want heaven without us. So Jesus, you brought heaven down. My sin was great. Your love was greater. Sing. What can separate us now? What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. And what a wonderful name it is, and nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. Death could not hold you, the veil torn before you. You silenced the boast of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory. For you are raised to life again, and you have no and you have no equal and now and forever God you reign yes and yours is a kingdom and yours is a glory and yours is the name above all names what a powerful name it is what a powerful name the name of Jesus Christ, my King. And what a powerful name it is. Nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. And what a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. And what a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. Father, thank you so much for this time together. And we believe the words that we are singing. Uh, we believe in the power of the name of Jesus Christ and how... He was before time and created this place and <laughs> came to earth, God in the flesh, died for his people, and, and now he's present. He rose from the grave and he's present with us here now. And his power is as strong today as it has ever been. As he works in and through his people, and through the love that he has showered upon us. God, we thank you for this good news. We thank you for the gospel that has changed our lives. And I will never be the same. And I will never look back. Only at how you've blessed me right here, God. And for the day that I get to be with you. Until then, I'm going to worship you every single moment that I can. Thank you for your goodness, your grace, and your mercy, and for this gospel that calls us to this place to fall on our knees and worship you. We love you. We love you. In Jesus' name.
Well, good morning again, church. Thanks for being here. Let me, let me start with two quick shout outs. The first is to our uh, youth group. Some of our uh, teens came up here this weekend, led by Hannah, one of our youth ministers, and they decorated the parking lot. Did y'all see that when y'all were walking in and said, welcome back? Yeah, th- that's awesome. You know, most of those teenagers happen to not be here tonight. And so that's a great example of B Church, you know, people who aren't here on site, loving those who are. And it's vice versa, right? So reach out to somebody who's joining us online if you're here gathered with us and reach out to him and bless them. Second shout out, and I've been waiting until we came back together to do this, and he's going to hate it. But, you know, back in March, overnight, we switched to an online church, all right? And that's because of two people. Okay, one of those is Kevin Woods. He runs all of our communications, Facebook, all the graphics you see. And the other is Russ Terman. And let's just give it up for them. Those guys have worked so hard untold hours uh, to pull this off and to get us to this place where we are tonight. And I also want to thank our elders who, you know, couldn't have foreseen the pandemic, but years before this invested in those guys so that we could be in this place where we could respond in this way. And now, like I've shared every week, so many are hearing the good news because of that investment. So I'm thankful to them as well. And you heard from those elders last week. And so I'm thankful for those folks. I was talking to Lindsay this afternoon and she's like, how are you feeling about this? And I said, I'm nervous. And she said, about COVID? I said, no, about preaching. I haven't done this in forever. I I cut myself shaving right before I came. I was so nervous. I forgot my wedding ring. Like we're one night in and we already already had a wardrobe malfunction, you know, so this live filming. So anyways, I'm nervous about this, but thanks for being here. You may remember back in March, it was the start of the pandemic and it seemed like everything we we were hearing was, was bad news. And so we needed some good news and we got it, some good news in in the form of a um, YouTube series called, anybody know? Some Good News is what it was called creatively. It was led by Jim from The Office, John Krasinski. And basically it just featured like good heartwarming stories from around the world. And some people tuned in to watch his little YouTube mini series. And by some people, I mean like a little over 50 million people have watched it, which is close to the number of views I get on a Sunday morning, like almost, almost there. Y'all, that was funny. One of my friends said, the hardest thing about preaching the pandemic is the mass. You can't tell if anybody's enjoying it. I need y'all to laugh because I am funny. (laughs) So anyways, who would have thought that by September we would still need good news? And we do, don't we? And so we asked y'all to tell us something good. Let's see what you said. My name is Elaine Frost. My good news is I just got married, I moved, and I started my first job teaching kindergarten, and I love it. We have the NBA Rookie of the Year right here in Memphis, Tennessee. We got to spend this week at the beach. Isn't that good news? We're We're having having a baby. baby. Some good news for our family is we got got to to go go back to school. I lost my two front teeth. My daddy is now a tenured professor. Hi, we're the Maharos, and we'd like to share the good news that on July 31st, we welcomed Ava Elise Maharo into our family. Thank you for all your wonderful prayers and your wonderful gifts. It really meant a lot to us. Thank you. Hey, Dasher's here. Um, we were asked if uh, we would share our good news oh. for the week, so we had some. We had a great week. After uh, almost three years of foster care, um, Allie being in foster care, <laughs> um, the adoption process is over. So, Cohen, what happened? Um, we got to adopt Allison. <laughs> <laughs> it's great news. Love it's you guys. Say bye. 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 My mom lives at Kirby Pines, and in January, we had her 90th birthday. Since that time, she's been in and out of the hospital, but now she's just doing great. And she has some good news, Mom. 
The good news is I'm getting married to Bob Shears, October the 1st. It's good news here at Kirby. Everywhere, the good, good news. Ah, man, that's so awesome. We got new babies, new marriages, so much good news. So thanks for sharing that Highland family. In fact, most of those folks aren't even, aren't even here on site. So they're part of our online community and they've got good news to share with us. So thank you for that. So as I was thinking about what to preach next after we finished our Daniel series and heard from our elders today, I'm pretty tired. I don't know if any of you, of you are like this. I'm tired of making plans in 2020 and having to can those plans, you know? So I decided I'm not gonna make plans anymore, even when it comes to preaching. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to just dive into the book of Mark, and I'm going to show you why in just a second, but we're just going to begin going verse by verse through the book of Mark, and we're just going to going to stay in that as long as we need to. We'll take breaks for other things as they come up, as we need to talk about special events, maybe outreach contribution, Christmas time. We're going to take some special breaks as stuff comes up on our world, but we're going to dive into the book of Mark. And this is why, this is why the book of Mark stuck out to me right now. This is how Mark starts. He says this, this is the beginning of the good news about Jesus Christ, God's son. Well, what do we need right now? Good news. And I also don't want to overlook the fact that, like I've said several times, you know, thousands of people are joining us each week who may have not heard the good news of Jesus Christ before. And I don't want to look back on 2020 on this pandemic and say, I wish I would have preached Jesus more. Like this is what the world needs. And so we're going to dive in to the book of Mark, starting here in verse one. So let's jump in and let's see if we can get kind of a picture of what the good news is according to Mark. This is Mark 1, starting in verse 1. The beginning of the good news about Jesus Christ, God's Son, happened just as it was written about in the prophecy of Isaiah. Look, I'm sending my messenger before you. He will prepare your way. A voice shouting in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. Make his paths straight. John the Baptist was in the wilderness calling for people to be baptized to show that they were changing their hearts and lives and wanted God to forgive their sins. Everyone in Judea and all the people of Jerusalem went out to the Jordan River and were being baptized by John as they confessed their sins. And John wore clothes made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey, and he announced, One stronger than I is coming after me. I'm not even worthy to bend over and loosen the straps of his sandals. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. All right, let's do an exercise here. Let's, if, if you've got your Bible in front of you, or if you're looking on the screen, you can follow along with me. I want to highlight some words here, and I want us to see if we can kind of get a picture of what the good news is about Jesus Christ according to John. We're going to make one of those word pictures. You've seen these before online. Okay, we're going to highlight these key words. And the first thing that Mark says about the good news is that this is the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ. Christ. Okay, Christ is not his last name. You know this. Those of us tuning in online, it's not his last name. It means anointed one. And specifically, it means he's the anointed to be king. So we could replace Christ there in the, in the center with king, and we'd be saying the same thing. There's something about the fact that Jesus is king that is central to the gospel. That's going to anchor it. The gospel is about Jesus, and it's about the fact that he is king. All right, let's move on there. And then it says God's Son or Son of God. So apparently, there is something about the fact that Jesus is the Son of God, that Jesus is divine, that is central to the good news or gospel. In fact, that's the same word, gospel, good news. I'm going to use them interchangeably. It's the same word. There's something about Jesus being God's Son that is central to that. But let's keep going on. And then he adds this he quotes scripture. He says, This all happened according to what was written. So apparently we can't understand the good news of Jesus apart from this long story of scripture that leads us to this point when Jesus arrives and Mark begins to describe his story. So scripture is a part of what the gospel is. But he goes on, all right? You also have this word sin. You see that word? It shows up a couple times in these verses. And then close by to sin, you have this other word forgive or forgiveness. And so apparently there's something about my sin and God's forgiveness 
that is central to the gospel or the good news of Jesus Christ. Let's keep going. Then the passage ends with that language of the Holy Spirit. You see that there in the last verse of this passage? Okay, the Holy Spirit is this long-awaited expectation of the people of God since almost before time began. And the expectation is that God would come and dwell among us by His Spirit. And so that is part of the gospel. So I want to pick up on that. And then I want to underscore two other terms. And these are the two we're going to focus on today. And they are two that I skipped. They show up earlier in the passage. They show up multiple times, both of them. And they are wilderness, you see that? And way. Wilderness and way. Um, what's Mark doing right here in these first few verses? I had a preaching professor and he used to say, and you've probably heard this before, that this is how you preach. You tell people what you're going to tell them. And then you tell them. And then you tell people what you told them. (laughs) Have you ever heard that? All right. Mark's not actually a preacher though. That's not what's happening here. Mark's an artist. He's a storyteller. How many of you watched uh, Bob Ross? paintings. Do you, do you remember Bob Ross on the PBS show who would do those paintings and he would draw those happy trees? You remember those happy trees in the mountain scenes? You remember that? I used to watch Bob Ross while doing calculus homework. Somehow that like put me in the mood for calculus, his soothing voice. Well, you may remember Bob Ross, he'd always start his pictures and he'd trace the whole thing. You'd kind of see these mountains and these trees take shape. And then he'd go back and he'd add these details. He'd add shadows on the trees and he'd add snow falling. And he had this little cabin with smoke coming out of the chimney. Okay, so what we have here is Mark, the artist, who's just doing this outline. And we're getting a shape of what that picture is that you just saw, that word picture. We're seeing the shape of the gospel or the picture of it, but it doesn't have all the contours defined yet. So confession, I've got a hard time appreciating art. Is anybody else like this? You know, um, like I like to go to an art gallery and I like to see the pictures, but you know what I spend most of my time doing? Reading the little paragraph (laughs) under the picture. You know, the one that's explaining this picture or explaining like the history of the artist trying to make sense of what I'm seeing before me. And that's what I like to, for instance, you know, just to give you an example of how bad the artistic side of my brain is. In third grade, I was in chorus. I'll never forget, I was standing on risers like these. And the chorus teacher comes by me. We're all singing our little hearts out. And she comes by me and she leans her head towards me. She does it again. She looks at me just disapprovingly. And she says, Eric, you're not singing. You're just talking. I said, no, ma'am, I'm singing. And she said, no, you're just talking. And to this day, every time we sing, I don't know the difference. Like, I can't tell if I'm just saying these words too long and too hard. You know, that's how I feel every time. So my artistic side of my brain doesn't work, okay? But I've been told, like, if you go to an art gallery and you're standing there before this piece of art, you're not supposed to just sit there and read the, the paragraph. You know, good art is the kind that you get lost in, the kind that just draws you into it without you even knowing you just feel yourself kind of moving into this picture. That's good art. And that's how Mark starts. You know, not only are we being invited into this scene, but everybody, the, the, the story starts with everyone, everyone in Judea, all the people are streaming towards this good news that they're hearing from the mouth of John the Baptist. And they're streaming towards it into, of all places, the wilderness. Do you notice that? Multiple times we're told that they are in the wilderness and that the beginning of this good news takes place in the context of the wilderness, going back to Isaiah's prophecy. Think about that for a second. They want to hear this good news so bad that they stream to hear it into the wilderness. The wilderness is a major character in scripture, shows up all the time, Uh, shows up from the very earliest stories. What happens to Adam and Eve after they sin? They head into the wilderness. Cain, after he kills his brother, goes into the wilderness. Uh, Israel, after the Egyptian bondage, they're released from bondage. They head into the, towards the promised land, but they don't get to go into it. Why? Because they sin and they spend 40 years in the wilderness. They sin again later. They're sent into the Babylonian wilderness. Jesus, in the next few verses, goes into the wilderness. And who does he find there? He finds Satan. 
You know, wilderness as a, as a character in scripture is this place where we encounter our sin. It's this thing that confronts us with suffering, with the stuff we don't like to deal with. That's where the story of the good news starts, which almost makes it feel like the good news starts with bad news, or at least a bad setting. But it also feels like a, like a really true place to start the story. You know, think about this for a second. Imagine if the Gospel of Mark started in a magical castle with fairies and clouds, and nothing was ever wrong. No one ever did anything. No one ever got thirsty. No one ever got hungry. No one was ever sick. No one ever did anything wrong, right? If you heard good news or what somebody claimed to be good news that started in a setting like that, what would you say? Oh, that's not real, right? That's not good. That's not true. That's fiction is what that is. That's fantasy. Because life is not like that, is it? Just this week, I'm thinking about people I've talked to this week. This week, I've talked to somebody whose grandson was in a terrible accident. I've talked to somebody who's separated from their family. I've talked to somebody who survived abuse and wrestles with it every day. Um, I've talked to somebody who's struggling with cancer this week. Uh, we have in this church family, we've got kids who are doing virtual school. I've talked to some of those families talking about how difficult it is. We have teachers in this church body who are teaching virtually, talking about how difficult it is. Right? We have people who've lost jobs in this family. I've been like overwhelmed by the amount of wilderness just in our church family this week and this week. My nephew was born. He's not doing well. He's struggling. We're thankful for the great team that's taking care of him in Texas. My sister was able to see him and be with him. She was able to hold him today. Praise God for that. He's getting a little bit better. But man, his life is starting hard. Life is hard, isn't it? So when we look at this picture of the gospel, it's setting in the wilderness makes us realize this thing right here is true. You know, it's the difference between being in an art gallery and saying, wow, that picture is cute. And saying, whoa, this is real. Like this artist, it's like they know me. It's like they know my life. That's how we know this news is true. It starts in the truth of our lives. K.A. Ellis, she said this about the good news. She said, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news of Jesus Christ, lives best on the ground among regular folk, living the grinding vicissitudes of daily life. Did I have to look up the word vicissitudes? Yes. She means the ups and downs, the highs and lows of life, the wilderness of our lives. And I think if nothing else, what we have learned in this pandemic is that life is like that, right? It's up and down. It's high and low. It's hot and it's cold. It's hard. It's a wilderness. But the news, which begins in that true place, doesn't stay there. And that's when this news about Jesus like turns from being just news, just true to being good. Because in addition to that word wilderness, we have this other word way. Look again here, starting in verse two. Look, I'm sending my messenger before you. He will prepare your way. A voice shouting in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. Make his paths, his ways straight. My dad used to take me to this old hunting camp when I was a kid. It was like bunk style hunting camp. There was always a bunch of old guys there and they did a lot less hunting and more just talking. And every morning they'd over breakfast, they'd tell these stories. And then every evening as we were getting ready for bed, they'd tell these stories and they'd keep me up late at night hearing these stories. 
And one of them was named Bubba, and Bubba told the best stories. And he told this story, I'll never forget, he told this story about being in the mountains of Colorado hunting elk. And he spends his day just up and down in the mountains looking for elk. He doesn't realize it because he's below the crest or the ridge of the mountain, but the sun is set and it's getting dark all around him before he realizes it. And all of a sudden it's dark all around him. It's snowing, but he can't find his footprints. He loses them in the snow. And he says he wanders around for hours trying to find his truck. He can't find it. He's shivering, and he's cold, and he finds this tree, and he huddles up under the tree, and he just shivers the night away. And I'll never forget, he said, Eric, you know what? I said, what? He said, the next morning, the sun came up, and there was a gravel road not 20 yards from me. He said, I took that gravel road down to the truck, and I drove home. A path appeared, he said. Have you ever considered that the opposite of lost is not actually found? You know, the opposite of lost is a path, a way, a direction. I mean, think about that. With an object, like if I lose my keys, I then find my keys. But when you and I are lost, we don't suddenly imagine that we are found. What do we do? If we find a direction or path or a way, we follow it and we don't feel so lost anymore. So Mark starts his good news about Jesus Christ by saying, there is a way that what the Lord has is a way. And that what the Lord has done is sent his king to this earth to travel upon the Lord's way ahead of us. And it just so happens that the Lord's way heads, makes its way through the wilderness of our lives on its way to glory. And that we have somebody on this way who is traveling it ahead of us saying, come on, follow me. That's what Jesus says, follow me. He says, I am the way. You remember that? You know what the Christians were called first before they were called anything else? The way. Eugene Peterson says, the other ways are no ways. I love that. One of the earliest Christian symbols is a fish. You know the story behind the Christian fish? You've probably seen these. You've probably doodled them on paper. You probably maybe have one tattooed or something like that, okay? You know the story behind the Christian fish? It's one of the earliest Christian symbols, not because we like fish, um, We certainly have some fishermen who make up a big part of the story of Jesus, but that's not actually why fish plays a big role in the early church. It's an acrostic. So the Greek word for fish is ichthus. You don't have to remember that. There's not going to be a quiz after it. But each one of those letters, ichthus, makes this perfect gospel acrostic. It goes like this, Jesus Christ, God's Son, Savior. Jesus Christ, God's Son, Savior. Ichthus. I don't know which Christian member of the way was the first to figure that out, but someone did. And then these started showing up everywhere. They're all over the ancient wor- world. They were scribbled into stone like you just saw there. They were scribbled onto parchment and passed around. They were, they were painted over doorways. And the idea was that Christians and people who were lost would see these fish and recognize that here's a safe place. Okay, here's a safe person. You know, here's a person that's following Jesus. You know, I feel lost and I'm looking for direction. Here's a way to go. This person's on the Jesus way. That's what the fish means. And that's the gospel. It's the Jesus way. Let me get up early to ride my bike. Um, The more kids we have, the earlier I have to get up. You know about that? And um, so I get up while it's still dark and I make a little coffee and then I, I roll out from the garage and it's dark all around me. The darkness just envelops me and I've got this little light on my handlebars that just lights a few feet in front of me, but I can't see anything to my sides and I'll hear these animals just darting into the brush and I'm convinced everyone's a lion, right? <laughs> and uh, everything spooks me, everything I hear and um, I just pedal along in the darkness and I can't see where I'm going beyond just a couple feet. I mean, several times deer have walked out 
in front of me. I had to slam on the brakes because I can't see him. It's this kind of frightening thing. I'm on edge the whole time I'm out there while it's still dark. And yet I've come to prefer that time to riding to any other time. Because what I found is that after an hour of being in the dark, I crave the sun. You know what I'm talking about? Like when I have felt lost or in darkness for a long time, it's that that makes me crave the sun. And it is the sweetest thing to see the sun begin to come up over Shelby Farms. And it's usually pink or purple. And that sun arcs across the sky. And I love it because suddenly everything that was scaring me in the darkness, the same animals are still there. But now instead of scaring me, it's just deer grazing in the meadow beside me. You know, birds, instead of just wrestling in the trees, they're singing. And I love as that sun comes up, I turn off my little light, my laughable little light compared to that sun. And I just pedal into the sun's rays. I went looking for a language to describe what I was feeling every morning as I saw that sun came up. And I came across this. This is from Zechariah. And Zechariah says this when he learns that Jesus the Christ is coming. This is what he prays. He says this. Because of our God's deep compassion, the dawn from heaven will break upon us to give light to those who are sitting in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide us on the path, the way of peace. So I printed that off and I taped it to my handlebars. <laughs> and I see it every morning as the sun comes up. I think there are people watching right now who feel lost. <laughs> I think there are people in this room to whom life feels like a wilderness this week has been hard. And the good news of Jesus is that there is a way and that he is traveling that way ahead of us and that he's calling to you and me and he's saying, follow me, follow me. And that is good news. We're going to take communion. If you came in here, if you're here in this space with us, you picked it up on your way in. Let me encourage you to get that out. If you're watching from home, let me encourage you to take, take communion. <clears throat> you might gather up with your family or by yourself with the Bible. And I want you to reflect on that Mark says that this is the beginning of the good news of Jesus. And that Jesus is on his way. And what we know about Mark is that this way is leading to one place. It's leading to the cross where he goes for you and for me. Where he dies so that I don't have to. Where my sins are forgiven, where they are washed in his blood. I pray that you would remember that right now. If you don't know Jesus and you're hearing that call to follow him, I encourage you to answer. You can comment below. We'll follow up with you. We want to tell you about Jesus and walk with you on his way. Let's pray, church. God, I'm overcome. <sighs> By being in the presence of your body. By feeling the movement of your spirit among us. We are each of us, God, overcome by the wilderness of life every day. And yet you go before us. So much of our life is unclear, and yet we see clearly a path. We see your footsteps ahead. And we, like the disciples that we see in the next scene in the Gospel of Mark, we long to follow you. God, we're thankful for your son, Jesus, whose death we celebrate right now. It's such a strange thing to celebrate a death. And yet we know it is this death that makes our life possible. And we rejoice in that, God. We give you praise and glory and honor. And we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen.